And then let's do this here. Cool. Awesome. Everybody can uh, hear me and see me okay? Cool. Um, all right, great. Well, thanks everybody for, for dropping in. Those of you guys that could make it here live with us and for folks that are watching this on the recording, thanks for uh, taking the time to watch this. We're, again, we're just going to go for about a uh, half an hour or so here. And then we'll have plenty of time for, for uh, check-in, et cetera. Basically, um, we uh, are looking to sort of kick our subgroups off uh, today going forward. And so this is our our um, retouching base to to uh, make sure everybody knows what we're doing and, and we have some clear direction, et cetera. So today we're gonna review where we are in our project, um, the, the plan for, uh, the tentative plan for the rest of the summer and, um, and then introduce our subgroups. Uh, and if not, everybody's here in your subgroup, that's okay, but at least we'll, we'll articulate who you guys are. Um, and we wanna, um, if, if, a lot of your subgroup isn't here today, that's okay. But in the next um, week or so, we'd like you guys to, to get together at least virtually and, and introduce yourselves to one another, et cetera. And then um, also let us know when, um, just you know, what your plan is for the next you know, two months-ish as we, as we work on these um, uh, uh, tasks. And then I'll just very briefly touch on some logistics and tools. And then again, um, we'll we'll pause the recording. And if if you got you all are having issues getting onboarded or having logistics uh, uh, challenges, um, I can help you for you know an hour or whatever it takes to make sure you're onboarded, uh, so your tools are activated, etc. Um, and then and and again, like that that the 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 bulk of our time here is just if you guys have questions, uh, concerns, what have you. Uh, so today we're going to cover communication, make sure that hopefully by the end of the day we have everybody's correct email addresses and, and, and contact points and all that good stuff. Um, we'll talk about our, our main resources going forward over the next couple months, which will be our website, our coastalmitigation.org website, which is um, how we're going to primarily share info to the public. And then our Google Drive, which is primarily how we will share um, uh, documents, etc., cetera, uh, resources with one another. We also will talk about some of the tools we'll be using um, as we create this shared body of knowledge. And um, uh, if you guys are just, you know, one of our experts and you're like, oh man, that stuff, so I don't want to do that. I'm just going to tell the undergrads how to go get it. That's all good. But certainly our, um, our, our research coordinators, our, our undergraduate research assistants, um, we want you guys to be using these tools, um, at least start using them. And then if you find other alternatives, whatever, we'd love to hear the other suggestions. But, but we will be using Zotero as our default um, way to sort of collect and archive and, and store all of the literature that we find over the ensuing um, several months. So we'll start with a little project refresher since we might have been uh, uh, on vacation the last week or, or two or so. So as a reminder, this is our um, effort to try to help move us forward in the context of uh, mitigation in the context of the coastline of California. So for a whole variety of reasons, and if you guys weren't able to make our um, initial kickoff meeting, um, all of those videos or those inter introductions, uh, discussions, terms, all that kind of good stuff, that those discussions and recordings are on our website, and you can just go to the website and watch those. And if you, if you again, if you missed those or, or weren't there, I encourage you to uh, go check those out. That goes into more depth about definitions and some of the more specifics about our project. But suffice it to say, uh, coastal stressors are growing. And some of our old school in kind at that same site, um, compensatory mitigation isn't necessarily going to work for us uh, going forward in all situations. And so our task, the task we are all working on together here, is to try to um, craft some new and improved, well-articulated guidance for when and how to implement out of kind and or off-site mitigation. We're not creating policy for the state of California, but we're we're creating um, our best uh, expert opinion for what we should be doing, and then hopefully parts or all of that would could then be used by our agency partners um, going forward. We're not we're not making policy. We're making suggestions for how uh, maybe a better way to go about doing out of sight off 
um, out of kind offsite uh, mitigation would be. What you all here are you are our are, are experts. They're going to help us uh, pull together these ideas, some that are very nebulous, some that are very concrete, um, bring them together. And then with the help of our research coordinators and undergraduate uh, research assistants, we're going to do some synthesis of that literature um, and, and be able to really well support whatever the, the arguments or the, the guidance that we put forward, um, what those uh, points are. Um, this is, again, the first phase of a multi-phase project. And so this is our uh, conceptual phase where we're bringing together um, uh, big ideas and overarching concepts. Uh, we, will we will try to test these specifically in subsequent phases, but that's not our, that's not our role this, this summer. The general approach that we're taking to, um, uh, to do this uh, mitigation stuff is uh, sort of craft an overlying framework for that guidance. That framework is comprised of different components grouped into themes, and those components have individual metrics that we would actually measure when it comes to doing, let's say, uh, an out-of-kind uh, mitigation project or, or assessing the performance of an out-of-kind mitigation project. Um, this is so. This is our timeline. Um, so uh, we started pulling, contacting folks, uh, you know, a few months ago. Um, we had our first workshop last month, and then basically starting now through the for the next couple months, we're going to be working on crafting um, in, in in subgroups a uh, particular guidance um, uh, with with some um, uh, topics that I'll discuss in a minute. Um, we want a, a draft version of whatever you guys are working on in August so that um, Brenton and Rich and I can provide some feedback to you guys. The final uh, draft of your of your um, subgroup output is uh, due in September, and then we'll get together again. All of this is virtually. We'll get together physically at the end of September again back in uh, Channel Islands, uh, back in uh, Channel Islands Harbor in Oxnard to have sort of a synthesis conversation. So this is our schedule. Um, you guys should have gotten um, uh, some some invites uh, to these. We've been having a little bit of struggle with uh, a few of our um, invites haven't been going out, and there's been some strangeness of some things that are supposed to be on Zoom get converted to Microsoft Teams, and so uh, I think I think we've we've solved all that. But but going forward, uh, obviously this is our logistics check in. Essentially, from here on out, the next couple months, you guys will be working in your subgroups. Um, on August 1st, we're hoping to get, you know, whatever shape and form your, your subgroup documents are. We'll take a look at those, give you guys some feedback. On August 7th, we'll have another all-hands Zoom meeting um, where we want to discuss in more detail the framework after you've had many weeks, a month month or so, a month and a half to, to work on um, your components uh, to, to help uh, our uh, conceptualization of that framework. Uh, we, um, and then again, September one, we'll get your guys drafts, uh, your revised drafts, and then we'll have that together, uh, workshop end of September. We had our two day, um, brainstorming session in, um, and, and I, as I'm talking, it's hard for me to read the chat. So I saw somebody hit a chat. If that's something you guys have a question for me, you can just unmute and, and ask me, um, uh, but but a lot of brainstorming, all kinds of great stuff on the uh, on the uh, board and and different ideas up and down. Essentially, that's led us to where we are now. So the last couple of weeks, uh, Rich and Brenton and I were kind of going over that stuff, and we we think we have a path forward for us. We suggested uh, the way we'll go forward is with the these uh, are are with these subgroup organizations. Now we created five subgroups in our. Um, in our uh, workshop in uh, last month. Um, but after thinking about it, uh, rather than focusing on all five of those initially to the same level, we have decided we wanna focus on the first three here, ecosystem services, ecosystem function, ecosystem structure, as the units for um, equivalency, et cetera, in the context of out-of-kind uh, mitigation. We also, the group also um, had uh, specific comments on landscape and temporal trajectories, and those are important, but we think they're, they're going to fit in, in in a slightly different way than these uh, primary core uh, subgroups, ecosystem services, function, and structure. And we think those key considerations might actually end up getting pulled into the other three um, as, we, as we go forward. So we're all, we've all been assigned to um, uh, a subgroup 
um, you are more than welcome to participate in more than one subgroup, but we don't expect anyone to. Um, so we've assigned folks uh, into one subgroup. Each subgroup has uh, different uh, roles for folks. Uh, most of you are, are our experts, and so I'll drop down to number two here. In these, in these groups, you're going to be, um, you know, helping to brainstorm, contributing overall ideas, um, some suggestions. Hey, I think we really need to make sure we get, you know, topic X or, or, or blah, blah, blah has really been bothering me, that kind of stuff. Suggest literature. If you know of some great references, by all means, give them to our research assistants. Um, but we don't necessarily expect you to go to the library and go search down references. That's the task of our research assistants. Um, but then we definitely need you all to provide feedback as we're going forward. And as these drafts begin to take shape and, and evolve, um, to look at those and give you know as, as specific comments as you can, both from the intellectual mile high view, but also from uh, your experience as practitioners and as participants and regulators and, and professionals that, that have engaged with um, restoration and mitigation and those things, um, uh, really want your, your feedback. Um, uh, we, one of you, we've identified one of you from each group to be our, our lead, and that person, uh, he or she, will um, just uh, help us make sure that the discussion, the discussion is moving along in a productive manner and make sure that we're sort of coordinating with everybody um, and uh, sort of oversee the, the synthesis and whatever particular guidance to our coordinators and our research assistants, our, our graduate student coordinators and our undergraduate research assistants. Um, uh, each group has a research coordinator, um, and those uh, folks are going to take on um, the lead in, uh, we already have our initial draft documents, which we can look at um, when we uh, get to the end of this, but, um, but uh, our research coordinators are going to take the lead in, in pulling all these ideas people are putting together, and at least pulling together the first drafts, again, with advice from the experts and everybody, but, but the research coordinator will take the lead on writing your section, the individual section. And then also um, give any, um, we want our research coordinators to have a weekly check-in. Um, doesn't have to be long, but you know, it's a weekly touch base with our undergrads to make sure that they have, they know what, 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 what they need to be doing to support you all and support your, um, your evolving thoughts on uh, your particular component of, um, of mitigation. Uh, and then again, we have our research assistants. And so these folks are going to um, uh, help us locate uh, studies, references, literature, et cetera, that have relevancy to us. Um, again, we are not just doing a, um, a sort of big idea paper here. We want a big idea paper that is well-referenced and is supported by as much uh, literature and, and um, uh, quanti quantification documentation as possible. And so we want to have this to be a really well-referenced um, uh, document at the end of the day. And so um, our research assistants will be helping us out with that using um, the Zotero and some of the other tools we will talk about and, uh, and help us at least get started on the, the, the literature synthesis. So uh, with that, uh, we have uh, three of our subgroups. And so as, as discussed uh, last month, um, these are our um, ecosystem. So the, the first one is our ecosystem services group. And um, again, we're, we're thinking of our of these subgroups as the unit. And again, Rich or uh, Brenton, you guys cut me off if I'm if I'm saying anything incorrect or, or I'm going too off on a tangent or whatever I'm doing. But um, but so again, key idea here is these are these concepts are helping us with equivalency, right? So when we lose something from the environmental degradation or the impact. Um, we want to make sure we have a clear nexus and something that's um, that that's helping us to uh, guide us to that next stage uh, to avoid some of the massive losses of of ecological goings on that we um, may otherwise see. So in our ecosystem services group, oh sorry, hey Spencer, hey how's it going? Uh, was there a question? No, I just. That just got my audio to work. <laughs> Sign this call. Sorry. <laughs> Perfect. 
No, that's All normally right. my role. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's good. Um, so, uh, so he gives me, okay. So, uh, Eric Stein is going to be, uh, our lead, uh, person for ecosystem services. And then, uh, uh, other experts in this group, uh, Sean Hecht, Becky Oda and Russell, um, Gallipo, um, Vanessa Van Heerden is our, uh, research coordinator. Vanessa just finished her PhD at LSU. Yay. Vanessa, congratulations uh, on ecosystem services and, and how to articulate that and communicate those things. So she's a great fit here. Uh, Gabriel uh, and Megan are our research assistants that will be helping out um, ecosystem services. And then as with all the groups, uh, uh, Rich, Brenton and I are kind of floaters. So we will pop in as we can to try to help out you guys. We don't want to step on people's toes and, 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 and you know, try to drive the conversation or anything like that. But we just want to be available. And as we can help and, and lend our, our thoughts, we'll be doing that. And that will apply to all the groups. But we won't. We we don't need to be um, necessarily in every single meeting or every single whatever chain. But 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 we're here to support you guys. Then we have our ecological structure group. So our ecological structure group is um, going to be uh, led by Christine Whitcraft uh, from Long Beach, and uh, Brian and Katie and uh, Lauren are going to be the experts to to help uh, with structure. Um, Nicholas, Nicholas, are you here? And I, I didn't see if Nicholas is here, but okay. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. dude, how's it going, man? So Nicholas is just you? finishing, just finishing his master's at Scripps, um, uh, looking at uh, uh, the cool goings on in the coastal zone and uh, and the connectivity and all that cool stuff um, related to um, blue carbon and, and things uh, of the like. Um, and so, uh, oh wait. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so Nicholas, our research coordinator, Viviana is our research assistant. We only have one undergrad uh, research assistant for this uh, group. We might get one more. Hopefully, we'll find one more. But for now, Viviana is great, and she'll be able to to take care of you guys, no problemo. And again, Rich, uh, Brent, and I will be floating. And then for functions, uh, I tried to strong arm Spencer into being the lead, but but I'm, I, I'm not clear if, if he wants to be the lead or the co-lead. So we could also uh, we can talk about that later today. But but maybe Spencer is the lead for for our ecological functions uh, subgroup. Uh, Pete, Josh, and Mike are going to be helping out. Um, and then Samantha uh, is here. Samantha just finished. Samantha, are you here? She she was she had a commencement today. She just finished her uh, master's at Oregon State. Um, uh, so she uh, is uh, looking at reefs and, and refunctioning and measuring uh, organisms on on reefs and and cool things like that. Alternative ways to count stuff and and uh, etc. Uh, so Samantha is our research coordinator, and Max and Eddie are our research assistants here. Um, uh, they'll be great. Um, and again, Rich, Brenton, and I will be floating on here as well. Okay, so uh, when I finish this in a minute, we'll we'll uh, have a pause and we can um, pop folks into a breakout group so you guys can say um, at least hi to one another in your um, in your subgroups. Um, but uh, by way of making sure everybody is is clear of the goals that we're we have for um you all in our in our subgroups um as a reminder this phase we're creating general guidance um and so uh by the end you know by come fall we we will have a well re well reasoned well supported guidance document for dealing with out of kind and again this is the framework that we're thinking about this overarching framework comprised of components, maybe organized into themes, and then uh, specific metrics that you might go out and, and measure um, in, a, in a particular site, be that a reef or a sandy beach or what have you. Uh, Rich Brenton and I will take the lead on that overarching framework. And that's uh, the primary topic of our August 7th, um, uh, you know, couple hour uh, a brainstorming session on Zoom. Um, and so, so you guys don't have to worry about that. But as you're going about your subgroups, if you're having ideas for how these different subgroups might articulate with one another, do take notes on those and 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 um, you know give us that feedback. Um, but you all are primarily primarily focusing on these uh, these two levels. And so we're thinking this is on the order of about a 20, 25 page document ish. Um, don't have any magic reason why 20, 25 pages. It just sort of seems like in that range, there's nothing magic about 
being a little bit less or being more or whatever. But that seems to be about right uh, in terms of the scale that we're talking about. Um, focusing primarily on these components um, and, uh, and then as you can uh, be bringing in these metrics. Um, so far, uh, we have draft documents that, that we all uh, worked on for a bit. Um, and you all have access to those in our Google Drive as the starter documents. And those, uh, those uh, a start, the, the, the skeleton of your final document are broken down into these headings. And these are um, consistent throughout all of our subgroups. As you go forward, if there's a clear, you know, oh my gosh, we really need to have a section on X or Y, please let us know and maybe we'll, we'll encourage you know, the other groups to have that. So we have, we have consistency about that. But this, these seem to be um, a, a good starter, at least. In your document, you'll start with a definition of, of what your component is and, and why it's in your subgroup and why that's an important thing. Um, and then uh, of the general definition, and then go into the, the components themselves. Again, these are things that apply to all or most coastal ecosystems. So it's not just wetlands, it's not just reefs, it, it's something that should be um, applicable to multiple systems. Uh, and then uh, the utility, which is how might we go about, um, you know, calculating equivalency um, uh, in the context of out of kind using uh, for the components that you've articulated. Um, the relevance importance, the relevance and or importance of this for, uh, for, for mitigation and for uh, environmental management. Uh, any existing research needs or hurdles. Um, now, when we put those down in the sub in our in our brainstorming session, that was more like, oh, we think we need to look into this. Those might persist. The, those research needs might persist at the end of this document. But hopefully at least some of those will be able to address with some of the, the more detailed uh, literature review that, that you all will be helping us do uh, in doing over the next couple months. Um, and then, uh, and then any example or representative metrics. Again, you're not being asked to create uh, specific metrics for every single ecosystem, but if there are, are some su suggestions or illustrative ones uh, that would really be helpful, um, please do articulate those. So I have a comment about this. Um, <clears throat> this was what we did when we structured it during our brainstorming session. Uh, there's a couple of things that I just wanted to comment on. There's not really a place for like the literature review or previous applications or whatever. So I'm not sure it, where it fits in here. It might just fit under components. It might fit under utility. It might go in different places, or we might just decide that we're going to need to have some other section that really talks about how, you know, how has this particular component been used in the past or you know because because uh, eventually what we're going to what we're trying to do is we're trying to pull together the literature about each of these components and and do some kind of maybe it's not really a meta-analysis although it's possible there would be enough data to do that but at least some sort of structured literature review so um, we don't really have a section for that in here and so we might and then the other section, the other comment I wanted to make, which was relevant for everybody, is that I realized when we were brainstorming and when we've set up this whole thing, we've really been focused on compensatory mitigation because this is all about compensatory mitigation. But when we get to this stage of the project, make sure that you think beyond examples of how it's been used in compensatory mitigation because. Yeah. Lots of these things, I mean, they could be used in other kinds of compensatory programs. They could be used in biodiversity offsets or other sorts of things like that. So when we're when we're thinking, and especially when we're doing the literature review, we should be casting a broad net to see whether there's applications of these components in other um, settings, other, you know, for other purposes that can be adapted for compensatory mitigation and that might help us too. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. And so, so um, folks are here because you guys have some uh, facility with um, this in the past. Um, but, but just like Rich said, you know, we, we don't want, we want to be informed by what we've done or, or what has worked or what hasn't worked in the past, but we don't want to be overly constrained by that, right? We want to make sure that we're, we're thinking uh, you know, future forward in terms of our guidance. So that's great. Thanks, Rich. Uh, Brent, anything else you wanted to add so far? 
No, all good so far. Cool, cool. cool. Um, okay, so again, this is where we are in our timeline. And uh, so uh, we're on line number two here. Um, and uh, and we're ready to start going. And so um, to get going, um, we have some logistics that we wanted to just make sure everybody was okay with. And if you guys, are, again, are having issues connecting or whatever, um, I'm, we're here for you know another hour or so to to help make sure everything is turned on or flicked on right. So today we'd like uh, these are the things we'd like to um, before we you disappear if possible uh, to check these things and I put these in the chat. If you guys came late, maybe Brenton, you could throw them in again one more time. Um, uh, the first one is uh, just to have at least a quick look at our coastalmitigation.org website. Hopefully, it'll take a, a longer look after today. But if there's any glaring issues that are like, oh my God, we re really need of this or need of that, um, definitely let us know. One of the biggest glaring issues are we we have not identified ourselves. And so, so one of the individual tasks, one of the first individual tasks is for you guys to look at our uh, contact sheet in Google, and I'll go over this in a sec, our contact sheet, and um, and just make sure that we have your right um, email addresses. And if, if, if you prefer to have stuff shared with your private email or your agency email or, or whatever. Um, just want to make sure that we're using the communication method that's appropriate for you. And then um, we would like to definitely add to that website um, our identities. And so our name, a brief bio, brief meaning like one, two, three sentences, not very long, and then uh, an image um, if if that uh, works for you. If, you. if you don't want to have your image shared or your name shared, that's fine. We don't have to. But but um, in the idea of transparency and, and and showing everything we'd like to do that for everyone that is comfortable with that. And so we have a folder in our Google Drive where uh, we have a, a document. You can just paste your your couple sentence bio in there or just type something in um, for us. And then there's a place you can drop a, a, a JPEG of a recent picture of you. Um, OK, uh, so uh, like to hear if anybody has any uh, major issues with the mitigation uh, website. Then in a second, when I stop here, we'll we'll uh, break up into um, uh, breakout rooms, and you guys can take five minutes and just say hi, introduce yourselves to one another in your subgroups. Um, and we'd like you guys to uh, now. I understand that not everybody is here today, so we maybe we can't do it today. But at least uh, ha start the conversation of when might a default check-in time would be good. You do not have to meet weekly or anything like that. You guys can decide however is most convenient for you all um, as we go through the summer. But at least for our um, research assistants and our, our research coordinators, want to make sure that we had um, at least a check-in time once a week. So, you know, a brief time that you all could jump on Zoom and know that everybody would be available to, to chat and catch up. Um, and maybe that would work for the whole group, maybe not, but but we just like to have you guys start the conversation about that. And if you can if you can lock that in today, that'd be great. If not, in the next uh, week or so, we'd like to get that. And if you could communicate that to Brenton, he can he can sort of uh, be the roundup of that, um, so that we we don't uh, disappear from one another for weeks on end and aren't sure what's happening. Uh, and that's as a group. Individually, just want you all to uh, uh, go onto that our contacts sheet and just check your email address and or phone number and make sure that they're okay. In addition, our, our friends that are uh, in agencies, we um, asked in our uh, uh, workshop a couple weeks ago, if you might identify another individual in your agency so that we have at least two people in each agency. So there's kind of multiple touch points uh, there um, that you think would be good to, you know, provide some feedback, input, et cetera. Um, and so uh, you can you can s toss those names at the bottom of the contact sheet as well, or those potential contacts, and we can reach out to them. You can share our website, and we can reach out to them. Um, and then uh, uh, lastly, we just wanted to make sure everybody could confirm that you guys got onto our Google Drive and, and, and are in there. Um, and then uh, also uh, Zotero. Now, uh, not everybody has to use Zotero. Our, our research assistants and coordinators uh, will uh, should, um, but everybody's welcome to. And so, if you if you are interested, everyone here is welcome to use all of our tools. But we know people are busy. But at least those two, we wanted to make sure that um, the folks that needed it uh, definitely have access to the Google Drive and the Zotero before we log off today. Just uh, since this is the first time I haven't taught the Zotero before or, or in my classes, so I'm also learning how to articulate it to you all. 
And so um, if, if there is a hiccup in, of, of onboarding, um, I'd like to know that today so that we can, uh, so I can um, provide better guidance to get people onboarded. Um, and, and Pete has a question. Oh, sorry, Pete. Yeah. I, I have just a general question. There's the three subgroups, right? Yeah. And um, maybe you go back. And what, uh, what is the end product going to be three pieces or is there going to be some sort of synthesis? Synthesis. So, so we have, we have these three pieces here and that's what, um, that's what you guys are focusing on the next couple months. Right. And so yeah. you're focusing just on your say ecosystem services or your function. And then we will, let's see, where is it? Where is it? Okay. And so, and so that that's here. Pete, right? That's sort of like the, yeah. the lower two levels. And then um, after you guys have worked on it for a bit, we're, that's when we're having that brainstorming on August 7th to sort of, uh, you know, conceptually talk about what might seem to work for the framework. Is this like a one-to-one a -one thing? Is it, a, is it a, a weight of evidence thing or what have you? Um, uh, Rich and Brenton and I will take the lead on the overarching framework um, that will sort of be the the mothership into which these sub uh, group reports will go into. And, and then that's, well, then we'll come together um, at the end of September with that holistic thing together. And then we can get feedback. Does this make sense? Oh my gosh, this, the, 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 we, we need more detail on this or something. Does that make sense? Maybe. I, the only reason I'm asking this is when I look at these things, I think, because the work that we do, we don't split it into three pieces that all three components are considered together. And, and the reason I bring that up is because that often guides the, the metrics that you use. And so we're, if we're evolving, you know, kind of developing ideas about metrics, you know, how do you measure stuff and then how do you convert it um, independently? It, there may be little opportunity for, for synthesis of the overlap because there may be no overlap if we are considering these things separately. Well, I, 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 it seems like there should be overlap. Um, we huh. didn't, but I guess I guess this is our starter conversation. Okay. So after a few weeks, if people, if if everybody's like, you know what, this doesn't make sense. This we need to be more integrative, like like fundamentally integrative, not like you know in a month and a half be integrative. Um, we're happy to sort of you know mix things up and and have more okay. more interplay. But we thought we'd just start with the the subgroups this way. Yeah, I just have a couple other questions or comments rather about that. One is, yeah, I think that, you know, we broke it up into these groups because of the logistics of working together in smaller groups, but that for sure, when, if people think that they want to have like more cross-pollination, then that's something that you should let us know and we'll try to figure out okay. how to do it. We're trying to like not overburden people with whole group meetings. Um, and and try to keep it you know as logistically simple as possible but um you know definitely it may not be a good idea it may be that we need to do it sooner rather than later and then the other thing asking about whether there are going to be three sections um we haven't really talked about this but you know there's going to have to be some besides the framework part there's going to have to be some smaller guidance document that's more on the order of like five pages or something like that that's going to pull it all together for guidance to managers and then these individual subgroups will be like the documentary backup you know the background information and so i think that this is you know once we once we get through these the three subgroups we also we still have to also figure out how we're going to do landscape and temporal trajectory. Sean talked a little bit about this, but that is also, I think, Pete, another example, though we pulled those out and separated them from the brainstorming session because we think those cut across the other groups. And so we need to figure out how we're going to deal with those also. So clearly we don't have it all worked out. We don't know what everyone's going to say and think of. And so, you know, we're going to have to work on the integration part of it later. But I would say that if you're each group, if when you're working on the metrics, on the components and the metrics, if you think that you need to, you know, to be better integrated, then just let us know and we'll we'll figure out a way to make that happen. I have one other comment about that, which is, do we have like a starting impact? I mean, so when I think about these things, 
you think, okay, well, especially, especially if you're thinking about a kind, um, then you think, okay, well, what is the metric of the impact? Because we need something to be equivalent to. And so, and, the, and they're not generic. I mean, impacts come in all forms, right? And so, so I didn't know whether there was some sort of starting impact that you're mitigating somehow so that you can get equivalency to. Yeah, we, we, we don't, we haven't, that, we haven't articulated that. You okay. guys can definitely for, you know, getting the ball running, you can pick one, pick something to help uh, crystal, you know, crystallize your thoughts, but we don't have, we're not, we're not talking about an oil spill or we're not talking about sea level rise, quote unquote, as the starting uh, stressor. Yeah, it could be. I mean, that's another thing that could be useful to, to go across the different subgroups to have like, you know, see how each subgroup would deal with an impact, but we haven't come up with like a, you know, a hypothetical impact. We, in the next phase, we'll be dealing with individual, uh, trying to apply this framework to individual habitats, and then we'll be more specific there for sure, but it could be useful to make uh, the discussions here a little more concrete to have something, to have a, you know, an example impact, but we, we haven't come up with that. Yeah, and, and, and to follow up on that, uh, well, both those, both Rich and, and um, Pete's points is, um, we're in concept phase, and then again, we'll sort of do the acid test in the next phase, which, um, you know, if you guys are willing to participate in that, we'd love to have you there, but but we don't expect you all to go there. We'll, we'll reorganize, uh, you know, our, our, our working group for those. Um, and that is really an acid test of whatever the structure and framework and stuff we have together. We then have a third phase where we come back and try to revise this for all the deficiencies that we we that were pointed out by by trying to apply it in a more um, pragmatic context. So um, so so the document that we will the document that will be produced from this phase is an interim document, right? So it's not it's not the the final end all be all of the guidance it will be revised over the next you know year and a half or so cool great questions thanks Pete. um where was i um okay cool um so oh, sorry yeah other questions or other people have questions so far okay um, so a couple of logistics tools, logistical tools that we just wanted to point out with. Um, again, many of us have used EndNote, and when we we surveyed uh, many weeks ago, uh, people seem to be mostly comfortable with EndNote. But um, this this new suite of tools, uh, which seems to offer a lot of potential promise with some of these uh, literature review review types of uh, endeavors that we're doing here, um, seem to work better with Zotero, the open source version. Of, uh, of bibliographic software. And so we're gonna go with that. And so you all should have gotten um, a, a, an invite, or if not, it's on the link in here, uh, to a shared library that, um, and Zotero and Research Rabbit are both free things. You don't need to pay any money for this. Um, and uh, uh, ways of organizing, et cetera. And so we've set this up so that we can all share these things. I'll, I'll show you an example of what each of these are in a sec. Um, and let me just show you right now, I guess. So, um, Zotero, um, so Zotero has, um, uh, is, is a way of organizing references. And if you all have used it before, what have you, um, you might have an individual library. Um, we have a we have a shared group library, so all of us can be contributing to this together. How I've organized it is I have a general area with general references that um, uh, might be of use for us. Um, and then each of our subgroups, we have different sections. So as your, uh, say, ecosystem services subgroup starts to go, you can use this folder or any additional subfolders that you all find um, useful to go ahead and add your references um, to keep them organized so that they're, they're, they're most helpful to you in your writing, et cetera. Um, Research Rabbit is a tool that I think will be particularly helpful as, as we're going forward. Um, and this is a, uh, a browser-based tool that um, we can link our Zotero to. And um, the, only, the only little hitch is um, apparently it only links to pr 
pri personal libraries, my library, as opposed to the group library. So I have a I have a question into the organizers, but but it's just a matter of dragging and dropping between. But one of the the neat things that I think will particularly help us, especially as we're working on these sort of larger concepts and trying to figure out, as as Rich was articulating that some of these ideas aren't necessarily a quote unquote compensatory mitigation or a, a restoration project. They might touch into broader uh, themes. And so in this case, I have a, a handful of references in here, 41. You can both search for um, uh, material inside uh, Zotero or you can search inside here and these things will sync back and forth. But in this case, we have a, a series of, of papers here and you can do this cool stuff like this, and it'll show the relationship of all these papers in terms of based on uh, literature cited. And so I think as we as we start to pull stuff together, this can be really helpful. And oh my gosh, all these guys are are linking to uh, Plomartis, pl Plomartis, or, or whoever. And you say, oh my gosh, that that person's great. You can also use this if you do have a lot of heavily referenced authors to um, find more work by that particular author or that research group that might be helpful as we're, again, exploring um, uh, documentation and supporting information beyond the typical, um, you know, single topic search function. Um, so anyway, so th that's just a little example there. Um, I also wanted to show everybody our, so this is our shared Google Drive. And so hopefully everybody got an, an email invitation to this. Uh, it might look a little weird. My The way I engage with um, uh, Google Drive is through uh, my my private email because our school one gets crazy because we have an additional uh, term, term in there that, that causes problems when people try to share it. Um, so Littoral Pirates, if you got an a email from or an invite from Littoral Pirate, that was not spam. That was our <laughs> coastal mitigation stuff. But um, uh, in this case, we have our um, the information from our, our, our kickoff meeting. Um, and here in the subgroup materials, we have um, those starter documents that we began drafting last time. And so you can sh scroll through here and, and see uh, and use those as a starter. You can start from scratch if you want, um, whatever uh, floats your boat. And then we have, um, where'd I go? And then I have, um, or we have, then we have tools and resources. And this is where we'll share stuff communally that, that is relevant to all the different subgroups. So this is today's talk is in here, for example, the PowerPoint is in here. This is where um, our collaborators are. So this is our or who's who and, and contact and all that kind of good stuff in here. Um, and this is also where, for example, today we have, um, uh, you can click on this, find your find your name and and top, type in your your one or one sentence or two sentence bio uh, and or our, uh, upload your headshot so we have uh, that and then also i'll just show you our coastal mitigation website um, which is right here and again we'll be expanding this and this is um, we, we don't won't be updating this every week or anything but but as we get to different uh significant um uh, points and maybe want some feedback on documents, perhaps from a wider group in in our agency or whatever. Uh, we're happy to you know update this with um, with different iterations of our documents as we go as we go forward. And so um, yeah, and so there we go. And so with that, I think uh, it's about forty five minutes. So I think I'll pause there and um, uh, first ask questions. But then uh, if we don't have any burning questions, maybe we'll open up the um, the uh, uh, breakout rooms and you guys could jump into breakout rooms for maybe just five minutes and say hi to one another based on your subgroups. Um, and, uh, and so I'll, I'll pause that for a second. Uh, questions, anybody have any, um, any logistics questions or any, any other uh, things you guys are wondering about so far? I had a question. Yeah. I was wondering if Zotero is like browser based or do I have to like download it? Uh, both. So, so there's a, okay. there's a browser uh, and, and, and the recommendation is when you're doing searches like Megan in, in the, in the live from the library website, um, it's, it's easiest to have it in the browser. You don't have to, you can search in any database, save that, save the results from that and then mm -hmm. upload it. So you don't have to do it browser based if you have, if there's some issues with that. Um, but there also is a, um, a desktop uh, uh, version, which is sort of okay. uh, the one I think is the easier to, or um, uh, gives you a little more power in terms of doing some of the stuff. 
but the very first time, the very first time you get on Zotero, you should um, register on the website and sort of first set it up on the website and then download the stuff to your to your desktop. Okay, sounds I'm, good. I'm not sure for all the browsers, but for Chrome at least, there's a great little plugin where when you're on, when you're when you've done a search and you're on the citation, you can just push a button and it just downloads all the citation information to Zotero. So it's super super easy. And Megan, maybe we can, um, once everyone has a chance to like sign in and get it added to the group and all that stuff, maybe especially for the research assistants, we can schedule a time like okay. early next week or something like that later in the week. And we can do like a little tutorial and kind of play around with it and make sure everyone understands how to use it. Cause I still, I used to use it a bunch when I was at UCLA and I haven't used it for a few years. So I kind of need a little refresher too. So uh, we can do that. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. So, so to, yeah. So, by no means we expect everybody to use all these tools like today going forward. Today was just to make sure that that folks were able to to you know get to the reference or get to the um, resource. Excuse me, and and you know that if there is some problem logging on, because again, I I haven't taught this either before, so I'm not sure the best way to teach folks. But I wanted to first make sure that everybody was able to establish you know a free account that kind of thing. And, and if there was some weird hiccup that I, we didn't know about, we wanted to learn about it today so we could cross that hurdle and then somebody else had a question max or somebody had a question uh yeah i had a question as uh you were talking about zotero on research driver i started making my account but i realized i'm using my ci account and mm -hmm. but since i uh, graduated technically wouldn't that mean that uh it's on borrowed time so i wouldn't have access to that right like after a certain point right so so the slickest thing would be to join the alumni association and then and then you would have it for you know at least another year um uh -huh. Didn't have to but 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 yeah but you don't have to um but but you guys can talk to us about if if there are uh identity issues logging on issues we can and we can work on that but um but yeah i think i think you probably have till like the end of the summer max in terms of the access to your email oh, okay okay cool all okay if there's no other burning questions maybe we'll i'll just uh uh kill the recording here